analog existence. <laughs> Welcome everybody to the theatre at Parliament House Canberra for the launch of Navigate Senate Committees, a website celebrating 50 years of the modern committee system. Uh, we meet here today where people have met for many thousands of years and I acknowledge the Ngunnawal and Ngambri peoples who are the traditional custodians of the Canberra area and I pay my respects to Elders past and present of all, of all Australia's Indigenous peoples. I also extend those respects to other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here today or watching this launch online. Can I first welcome the President of the Senate, Senator the Honourable Scott Ryan, the Deputy President, Senator Sue Lyons, and Senator Rachel Seawitt, who are our speakers today. Um, I'd also uh, like to, uh, I, I should say, for those that don't know me, I don't think it's too many of you, um, my name's Richard Pine, the Clerk of the Senate. Um, I'd like to welcome my predecessor, former Clerk Dr Rosemary Lang, former Deputy Clerk Maureen Weeks, and former Usher of the Black Rod Brian Hallett, each of whom in their day have also led the Senate Committee Office, which provides Secretariat support for the lion's share of Senate committees. That's where the magic happens. Committees have always been part of the Senate. A range of domestic standing committees were set up within a month of the Senate first meeting in 1901. And that same year, the first select committee was established to examine steamship services between the mainland and Tasmania. One of the architects of the modern committee system was the eighth clerk of the Senate, J.R. Odgers. On a study trip to Washington DC in 1955, the then second clerk assistant was so impressed by the, uh, the watchdog role of congressional committees that he recommended the Senate adopt a similar model. As newly minted clerk in 1965, I just took the rather unorthodox step of making a personal submission to Cabinet, presenting a case for an expanded Senate committee system. The Cabinet, concerned that his proposal would substitute Senate control for government control, decided it would not receive the paper or take official cognizance of it. Hard to imagine the executive government dismissing the recommendations of a Senate clerk. <laughs> But I digress. Um, <clears throat> the modern committee system was born on 11 June 1970, when the Senate adopted two resolutions. On the one hand, establishing legislative and general purpose standing committees to inquire into government activity and legislation across seven subject areas. And on the other hand, to establish five estimates committees to examine government spending. Of course, at the time, it was widely expected that only one of those resolutions would succeed. So in many ways, the Senate adopted two committee systems for the price of one. That's another story. 50 years and thousands of committee reports later, it's hard to imagine the Senate without its committee system, which has become a keystone of parliamentary inquiry, scrutiny and accountability. We have three systems, to, uh, three speakers today, followed by a demonstration, a, a show and tell of some of the features and the content of the new website, uh, technology permitting. Um, it's my first, uh, my pleasure then to introduce our first speaker, the President of the Senate, Senator the Honourable Scott Ryan. Thank you, Richard, um, to my parliamentary colleagues, um, to officials, staff, past officials, uh, welcome and thank you for what you've done, but what, what's got us here, but also coming along today. Um, 50 years ago, in resolving to establish the legislative and general purpose standing committees that Richard just outlined and the estimates committees, the Senate revolutionised the committee system and indeed the Australian Parliament. It changed the way the Parliament not just the Senate, considers legislation and policy matters. And since that time, the committee system has brought to light a raft of social, economic and sometimes forgotten issues and ensured they have an opportunity to be placed upon the public record. People without voices in another place were given a voice through this pr process of the Senate. 
The senators who participated in the five hours of debate on the motions to establish these two sets of committees had a sense of significance of what they were setting in train. Senator Ian Wood went as far to proclaim, I believe the parliament and the people will say when they look back on this occasion, it has been the greatest event and the greatest day in any parliamentary history. Now, I might not go quite as far with a sense of history about other certain events, but it did revolutionise the way we went about our work. The Navigate Senate Committee's site, which we're here to launch today, explores not just the modern committee system, but also traces back to the very earliest committees. Among the first of these was the Standing Orders Committee, later renamed the Com Committee on Procedure, now chaired by the Deputy President, which was charged with recommending the rules under which the Senate would first operate. Its role has evolved, of course. One of its most recent tasks in the time of the COVID-19 pandemic was to make recommendations to the Senate on something we probably never imagined, which is the remote participation of senators, and also to consider the impact of executive imposed restrictions and state and territory imposed restrictions on travel and attendance at the Senate, a significant issue for senators this year. In the first 60 years of the Senate's operation, referrals to committees were generally quite sporadic. Although the first bill was referred in 1904, attempts to refer legislation to committees were generally resisted by government senators, perhaps referring to the sentiment that Richard expressed before, governments not being as keen to substitute Senate control or parliamentary control for government control. Yet today it is routine for committees to consider bills. It seems incredible that in 1951, it was actually the referral of a bill that formed part of a trigger for a double dissolution election. By the 1960s, attitudes began to shift, senators became more active as a number of select committees produced bipartisan reports that helped shape public policy. Some of these issues do sound a bit bizarre to the modern eye, like the metric system, the container method of cargo handling, but some of them are still challenges today, such as Australian television production and offshore petroleum resources. The experience of serving on these committees convinced many senators that the then Clark J.R. Odgers proposal for a standing committee system had merit. Indeed, I also suggest that some of the news coverage of what was happening at the same time in the United States also gave senators encouragement. The establishment of the modern committee system has had, as senators like Ian Wood predicted, a major impact. In the nearly seven decades prior to the change, Senate committees produced about 120 reports compared to 5,500 5, since. Public hearings increased from 500 to 7,000. And it is a feature of the Senate and the Australian Senate that our committees travel to the people. They travel all around the country. We don't make everyone come here. And now with the advent of virtual participation, we hope to augment that to ensure that there are even more voices that might not otherwise get an opportunity before their parliamentarians to put an issue, have the opportunity to do so. Navigate Senate Committees provides links to every single one of these reports. It is an incredible resource that collates and repurposes data and statistics collected by the Senate Department over many years relating to committees, inquiries, reports and hearings. It shows how the shape of the committee system has changed over time and puts committees in their historic context, and as well as visualising the work of committees as represented by hearings held around the country and the production of reports. It utilises the Parliamentary Library's Parliamentary Papers digitisation project to link to every Senate committee report published in that series. It showcases also a wealth of photographs produced by Auspic and its predecessors, as well as oral history recordings, many of which were the product of a joint Parliamentary Library and National Library of Australia bicentenary project. A timeline showcases inquiries of enduring interest that reveal not only the effective work of Senate committees, but are a reminder of the political, social, cultural and economic evolution of our nation and our national attitudes. Accompanying the site is the hearings map, illustrating 119 years of Senate committees on the move around the country, allowing Australians to have their voices heard. It reveals that there have been over 7,500 hearings in 190 locations around Australia. I must say that one of the downsides of being a president um, is actually you don't get to serve on the committees in the way you used to. And in fact, it was one of the things I even missed when I was a minister. Um, my first few years here being in opposition, I travelled around the country, met communities and heard about issues that a boy growing up in suburban Melbourne would never have heard. And it is one of the things that makes our Senate unique. It gives people the opportunity to experience things, perspectives, people and places that a lot of politicians never would. 
As this site demonstrates, the Senate committees have and they will continue to play a central role in gathering information, informing Parliament and engaging the Australian public in policy, recommending reforms, redress, solutions, even differing ideas to issues facing Australians, committees and the senators who serve on them help shape this nation. The Senate is unimaginable without committees. There's almost nothing in the parliamentary world like our Senate estimates process. And I know they'll never admit it, but on the other side of this building, those in the House of Representatives secretly wish they could have an estimates process. But I do want to make a special acknowledgement, as I did in the chamber in June, um, and to follow on from what the clerk said. Every senator knows that the staff of the Senate are absolutely critical to the work that we do. Our staff work for us. You work for the institution. Every one of you who served time in the committee office has brought to bear an incredible ability to condense information and write coherently in a small period of time, encompassing and drawing in ideas from so many different people. We know, all of us who value the Senate committee system, just how important the work of the Senate committee staff have been. And for that, this is a project that acknowledges the work that you have done to support our elected representatives and make the Australian Senate such a unique chamber such a unique part of, our, of any Westminster Parliament and such a, a, a critical and important part of ours. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mr President. Uh, the, the, the President chairs the Senate, but not when the Senate resolves itself into a committee, which generally happens for the detailed consideration of legislation. That committee is chaired by the chair of committees, Senator Sue Lyons. The chair of committees also chairs the chairs committee, <laughs> which comprises the chairs of Senate committees. There's no confusion there. Um, I would like to welcome uh, Senator Lyons, who is our second speaker today. Senator Lyons has been chair, knocking the word man off the wall outside her office as she uh, as she took the role, chair of committee since uh, and deputy president since 2016. Welcome, Senator Lyons. Thank you very much, um, Richard, and uh, thanks, Scott, for your remarks, which I join uh, with. Uh, you know, I certainly endorse everything you said. It, it is wonderful today to be joined by some former clerks in Rosemary, Maureen and Brian, and also to have Jackie here. Because one of the things that I would say as a senator, if you imagine a duck sailing across the pond and the, the upper part of the duck is still and serene looking and then underneath the legs are working furiously, which is all of the work that you do every day, to make us look really good. And um, what comes into that in a very big way, as Scott says, is the work of the committees, which is absolutely incredible. And it's terrific having Senator Seawett here because I'm sure someone keeps a tally somewhere and she would have to be one of the senators who's probably done uh, a lot more committee work than everyone else. Um, so I started as chair of the Education and Employment References Committee and it, um, certainly some of the committee work that I did really stands out in my mind. And, and as Scott said, it, it's changed the way that I thought. And sometimes, you know, just to be honest, within these walls, you think, oh my God, why are we doing that inquiry? But you always m learn things. There's always something that you didn't know and something that you learned. But some of the committee experiences that stand out for me, particularly um, was, in the way that uh, Scott described, in that we go all over the place as committees, and I've certainly been to places I would never have visited as a private citizen, but it's the people coming to us to give evidence. So when we set up the um, inquiry into children with disability in education, which was truly a real eye-opener for me, um, people that we consulted with insisted that we hear from those children. So we had those children come and give evidence uh, to us as a committee, which again was challenging for the, the Hansard people in the room, uh, but nevertheless, um, it was very important to hear their voices because they experienced firsthand about being a child with a disability in education. Likewise, I participated in children in out-of-home care, and I think we were up in Brisbane, um, and I think Rachel might have been there as well, and we heard from these three amazing 
articulate young women who were probably 15 or 16, and they told us their experiences of living in out-of-home care. And, and as senators, that's such a privilege because we would never get to hear that. And whilst an organisation could also put that evidence, there's nothing like hearing it firsthand. And to hear those young women describe, in one instance, I think she'd lived in uh, something like 14 different places, including um, a boarding house. And you, you just think, this is so wrong on so many levels. Um, so that was an important inquiry. The, um, the Forgotten Australians, which I didn't participate in, and I won't, Senator Seawitt probably wants to talk about that because I know that she participated in that. And what important work that was to hear, to give voice to those adults who were so poorly treated uh, as, as young children and absolutely forgotten. So some of the things that stand out for me was, and, and Scott mentioned it, was the, um, the invention of the new committee system that we have now. It was actually Lionel Murphy, who was the senator here, who really pushed for that. And believe it or not, um, Labor took it uh, to an election. Imagine having an election platform about changing the Senate committee, but that's what we had in 1967. Uh, and in 1970, he and um, Mr Odgers had a slight disagreement because um, Senator Murphy wanted to be quite radical and he was very enamoured of, of, of the US system and, and Rosemary reminded me of that too. Um, and that's what he wanted to see. And Odgers thought, well, if we want to get this through the parliament, we need to be a little more conservative. But um, Senator Lionel Murphy insisted that we go the whole hog. And then, because there were dissenting senators on the other side, um, it, that, that, uh, that resolution, and indeed both resolutions, got up. And, but sadly, um, uh, then the first bill that was introduced into the, that modern committee system for review was indeed one that Senator Murphy put up, which was the removal of the death penalty. I mean, so critical to us and something that we uh, take as a matter of pride as Australians that um, we don't have the death penalty in this country. And interestingly, it passed the Senate and uh, then lay in the House, and it wasn't until Labor became the government that Attorney General uh, Senator Murphy um, you know, made sure that went through the parliament, parliament. So you had that groundbreaking um, piece of now legislation and is part of our culture and history, removal of the death penalty that really started in the Senate. If we look at the, the two other committee inquiries that really stick out for me is obviously the NDIS, which really will, uh, once it's properly bedded down, will change um, our culture and the way um, that people with disability are cared for and supported in this country. That of course, went through a couple of um, Senate committees. And of course, we had lots of people come and give evidence to that committee. Um, and then the other one which uh, stands out for me, and I participated in some of that, was the, the redress system, which was a long, um, drawn out process that, um, you know, initially we had the inquiry and then we looked at how we had the Royal Commission and then we looked at how we might actually um, address those images. And that must have been harrowing for the senators who participated in uh, hearing firsthand um, people's experiences of being in institutions. So it does do critical work. As um, Scott said, we can't imagine a Senate without our Senate committees. And um, again, within these walls, um, as you know, a senator who belongs to a party, uh, we're required to do certain things and take certain things for the team. And so I sit on some of the select committees and they are not a patch on, on the kind of standards that, that we've come to expect um, uh, as Senate committees. I think our system is, we, you as uh, people who support us are much more attuned to uh, making sure that we get good inquiries, that we get good outcomes uh, that we're our witness list as extensive as it can be, and the fact that we travel all over the country. So the Senate committee system is something to be cherished. And as Richard said, it's very hard to make change in the parliament. It has its own custom and, and practices and don't interfere with them. But when I became um, deputy president, I went to inspect the office and it had chairman of committees 
uh, on the wall. And I said, well, that needs to go. Uh, so again, I'm sure those duck legs were, oh my God, she wants changed on the door. And then there were a whole raft of block your ears, Rosemary and um, Maureen and Brian. There were a whole lot of hansards in the office and I said, they need to go too. All of that information is available uh, online. So, um, you know, uh, bring on the revolution of changing uh, chairman to chair and getting rid of the millions of hansards that were in the office. Um, so look, it, it, congratulations uh, on the work that you've done on this. Um, I look forward to having a, a much more um, in-depth look at it. Um, one of the things I like now, I'm sure Richard's done that to make sure his budget keeps intact, is when you open up the Senate page, it tells you how many inquiries <laughs> there are. I'm sure there's a, a method behind that. Um, but it is important to see, and we do give voice to Australians who don't normally have a voice, be it children or older Australians or forgotten Australians. Uh, we give them voice and and you know, we've been all over the country and it's an important, it's a critical element of this parliament. So thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you, Senator Lyons. I should, uh, I should point out that um, the, the, the Department of the Senate had, had been, um, you know, uh, quite ahead of the game in terms of changing the the, the, the name of, of your position, uh, Senator Lyons. Um, the, the parliament had gone so far as to change the Presiding Officers Act so that it referred to the chair of committees. Um, the Senate standing orders were amended uh, many years ago to, uh, to change it to, to chair rather than chairman of committees. It just took a while for the walls of the building to catch up. <laughs> just one of those things. Infrastructure's harder to, to change than you would think. About halfway through its existence, the structure of the Senate's committee system was transformed by a development which set it apart then and continues to set it apart now from most other parliamentary committee systems, particularly those of Westminster style lower houses. In 1994, the Procedure Committee recommended the adoption of a, a twinned committee system um, with legislation and references committees uh, across what is now eight subject matter areas, with the chairs of those committees allocated roughly proportionately to uh, party representation in the Senate. This provided considerable autonomy in particular to the Senate's references committees, which undertake wide ranging policy inquiries on matters selected by the Senate rather than by the government. Our third speaker, Senator Rachel Seward, is the longest serving member of the Australian Greens and because of the existence of the twinned committee system, has chaired the Community Affairs References Committee since 2009. Um, please join me in welcoming Senator Seward. Thank you, Richard. And before I start, I'd like to acknowledge the Ngunnawal and Ngambri people, the traditional owners of the land on which we're meeting, pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. And I'd also like to thank Richard um, for, uh, for hosting this and introducing me. Hi, Rosemary, Maureen, Brian, the President and to the Deputy President. Um, it's, uh, they're both hard acts to follow, by the way. Um, I, when I was asked to speak, I accepted with, uh, with a great deal of gratitude of being asked, but also very willingly, because I think the committee system is, uh, as was articulated earlier, a keystone of the Senate. I can't imagine our Senate, or in fact our Parliament, without the Senate committee system. It, I think, it gives voice, for me, it gives voice to the community in in the Senate, it brings the community into the Senate and it takes us out. Which takes me to that photo up there, which I didn't know existed, um, judging by the haircut and the fact that that was when Senator Barlett was actually a Senator for the Democrats. And I'm thinking that's red WA dirt. So I actually think it might be the National Parks Inquiry where we did go over to W. It's not. It's housing. It's housing. Oh. Because it looks like red, it looks like the uh, National Parks Inquiry that we're on over there. It was certainly um, when Senator Bartlett was a senator for the um, for uh, the Australian Democrats. Check it on the 
Let's check it on the website. But it does take me, it does take me back and it does, remind, it does remind folks that we actually do get out. And it reminded me, if it was that inquiry, that we actually held a Senate hearing um, on uh, the uh, veranda of Moogana Pastoral Station in the Gascoigne Murchison in Western Australia, which just demonstrates how we get out. We've had hearings um, all, literally all over, um, all over Australia, and it does actually make people feel more welcome when you're sitting on, you're sitting on someone's veranda talking about their country. It does make people feel welcome. But the committee system, as has been articulated in particular, you know, for in terms of the legislative approach, allows us to rigorously, or we'll try as hard as we can, to look at legislation. And it's certainly the case that the community views legislation with different eyes to uh, senators, and also they're the experts on the area in their area of expertise, and allows and enables them to bring that. But I particularly wanted to talk about the references committees. And Senator Lyons mentioned the Forgotten Australians Committee. Now, for the inquiries on that. Because for those that have been around a while, they will be aware that there was, in fact, three Senate inquiries into Forgotten Australians. And we just kept going. I chaired the third uh, inquiry. The other two were prior to me coming in here. But those of us that were committed to these issues just keep going, and the Senate kept going until we drove, uh, until there was some outcomes from that third report. But it wasn't just a third report, it was, from, it was building up on the momentum. And we know that from, there, from all of that process, and I'm very sure that if the senators and the Senate had not been working with the community, we wouldn't have got that issue onto the agenda and progressed it to the apology. It's, it's the same with the apology to, um, the, to the fam mothers and the fa fathers and the families of those that were uh, that forced adoption was inflicted on. Now, it, 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 seeing that come from the grassroots, because that issue came up from the grassroots, from lobbying, going to a Senate inquiry, I've got to say, it was heart-wrenching, the evidence we received, but it went through again to an apology. We accomplished real outcomes. So for me, that's the power of the Senate committee is to lead to real change. And it does lead to real change. And, it, and also, it's the place where senators work together on things. People, I use the iceberg analogy, but I think the duck analogy is actually better. But you know, you see the tip of the iceberg, but underneath is where all the work happens. Um, and that's, that's in the Senate. For me, the committee system is that, in that you see us fighting in the chamber, but then we work together. And when we were working together, on the forced adoption inquiry, we were sitting there around a table strengthening recommendations across the board. And we all agreed. It was a consensus report. And so often we do see consensus reports. And I think that's also a measure of the work of the Senate and the fact that senators are prepared to put party politics aside. In many cases, and I'm not, I'm not Pollyanna, there are occasions where we don't. But in, on these really, really important issues, People put party politics aside and work together. And I think that's also a real strength of the committee system. Um, we in a, we in, the system enables that um, to happen. And it has brought light to many, many issues, far too many for me to go through the whole list um, now. Um, what I particularly want to make sure I do is, again, um, and I know that the Prez and the Deputy Prez have also articulated their strong support for the Secretariat staff. You make us look fantastic. You are the ones that do the hard work. You go above and beyond. So when I say we're on the veranda taking people's you know, evidence, we've got the Secretariat working there, making sure that everybody's there, have organised for them to be there, have organised everything that's needed. Broadcasting is there, Hansard is there. And you are the, you are the ones that really have made this system work. Big thank you to Secretariat. I try to call out Secretariat every time I'm tabling, tabling a report, um, but I think that um, it, this place just, overall it wouldn't work without all, all of the staff anyway, but the, sec the system is as strong as it is because of the excellent work that you all do and the care that you bring to it. I've seen how Secretariat and um, committee staff respond to the evidence that we get. 
and I know that you care about what you're working on. So thank you very much. Uh, I just hope this system continues. There was a rare, there was a period of time in 2000, I think the system was changed in 2007, where for a brief period, was it 2000? In seven. Yes, but it didn't come through to around the end of 2006, where there was a misguided, in my opinion, uh, joining of legislation committees and references committees for, for a short period of time, which a lot of us really didn't like. Anyway, fortunately, sense prevailed and the system was put back to references and legislation committee and may it remain that way forevermore, in my humble opinion, because I think it works much better that way. Thank you very much for coming today and everybody go and have a look and encourage all your friends to have a look at this and, and family to see the work that the Senate committees do. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Seward. Um, if I could now invite to the to the podium, uh, with, with fingers crossed for the IT, um, Paula Waring. Paula Waring is an officer of the, the Senate Department, a long-standing officer of the Senate Department, who was the Assistant Director of Procedure and Research through um, most of the period of the development of, um, of, of this resource. Um, she escaped just, just moments ago to, to try her hand in, in Senate committees, um, which is just wonderful. Um, Paul is going to uh, give us a bit of a demonstration of some of the features and content of Navigate Senate Committees. Thank you, Paula. Thank you very much. Okay, um, just before I start, I just want to say that behind this beautiful interface is a lot of very unglamorous data that took a very long time to compile. So I want to put a thank you out to all the marvellous volunteers who assisted us in, in compiling uh, information from all over the place into one location. Um, the second thing to note is that this works best in um, Chrome or Firefox or one of the modern browsers. So if you're not having um, much luck, it could be that your internet browser is just a little bit old. Okay, so I'm going to start off and show you this. This here is our landing page, for, which we put together for the 50th. So this is under Senate, News and Events. And if you go under here, it has both of our resources. And I'm going to start off with the hearings map. So the hearings map was put together with the kind assistance of the Parliamentary Library. And so we, we have great thanks for them assisting with that. As you can see, it gives the total number of hearings. So basically, this is basically showing the map of Australia with all the hearings locations between 1901 and 2020. So what, I, what we can do here is hover over a particular spot and go, oh, Thursday Island, I wonder what the Senate uh, committees were doing in Thursday Island. Um, and then basically it lists the inquiries, at least the reports that came out of the inquiries for which there were hearings held in that location. So if I were to click on one of these um, reports here, Administration of Aboriginal Affairs, you'll, it'll take you to the PAL info site that the library manages and it gives you the full text of the actual report. So basically this also acts as a resource discovery um, internet site. Okay, so going back here, we have a couple of filters here. So this is looking at all subjects, but I can go, or oh, let's have a little look at rural affairs and see what kind of locations that we had for that. Now, it's not very surprising that rural affairs went all over the country, it, um, that, that, that topics for those inquiries went to lots of small locations. But if I want to check here and have a look at uh, law and order, clearly law and order is a capital city problem because uh, there's, it's, there's, there's not much anywhere else. So dropping into all subjects again. The other filter we have here is by year. So while the default shows every single year to date, we can take the tick off all, have a little look down here and have a little browse at what the Senate was getting up to in 1901. And look, 
there were committees travelling to locations in 1901. So basically this is the Steamship Communication Inquiry Select Committee of 1901 and they, the Parliament of course was based in Melbourne at that point but they went across the, across the channel here to Devonport and uh, some other locations, looks like Launceston. So this is a way of basically browsing our way through. When you look at here at these dates that are here, you can see that the Senate was actually very active right up through the middle of the 1920s, hit the 1930s, they suddenly did no work in the way of committees, the 1940s didn't even get a look in. Basically, it wasn't until about 1966 that there were committee hearings from every single year. So basically, this is a very simple um, and quite intuitive site, which is a lot of fun to have a little play around in here. OK, so I'll turn to the second site. This is Navigate Senate Committees. This is our main site. I'll take you through a few of the features here. So this basically is a committee map. So what we, what we did here is this is the family tree of Senate committees. It's a genealogy. We looked at every committee and said, what was their parent committee? What was the child committee, the next name change that came after that? And we tried to document it. So what we did is we put it underneath um, subject. We grouped them by subject. And I'm actually going to collapse all these to make it a little bit easier for you to see what's going on. But if you look. Yep. Look here at 1901, you can sort of see that the only committees that were operating at that time were the domestic ones, which have lasted through the whole time, many of them, and we picked up a few along the way. We had Senate select committees, so there was a few obscure ones that existed at the very beginning, some of them on matters that we would no longer um, have inquiries for. <coughs> we have a, <coughs> pardon me. <clears throat> we have an ombudsman now that would look into cases like this. We, um, we have other topics that no one would hold a select committee on these days. But as time went on, um, you can see that uh, select committees became extremely popular so that the, the page is very crowded for the modern day. But what I want to really take you to look at now is 1970, which is the reason why we're here now. So it's showing the estimates committees that, that came at that time and then, of course, these legislative and general purpose standing committees. Now, if I were to take health and welfare here, so there were seven committees that were set up in, in 1970. Health and welfare changed its name to social welfare, later became community affairs, which we know it um, as today. And as Senator Seawert was saying, this is the splitting apart into legislation and references, the coming together, and then the splitting apart again. So if you select one of these little lines, and these, these lines indicate the length of time a committee existed, so I'll go into community affairs reference. This is the current committee from 2009. It has a committee page, and there are 250 of these committee pages, one for every committee. So you can see that we have information on the chairs. This particular committee had very stable chair your personship there, so if you um, click on there, you'll get some biographical information about Senator Seward. We have a sequence here that allows you to navigate backwards and forwards between these committees in a line, so I could keep going back to the left there and, get, and end up at um, Health and Welfare. And then essentially we have a carousel here where we can put any images. What we're using this page for is a place to hang multimedia information about committees, anything that we've been able to collect that gives information about what this committee did. So there's a nice photo there. We've also been able to use oral history interviews from the National Library. So uh, this is Claire Moore being interviewed in 2010. She was asked, what does the Community Affairs Committee do? Community Affairs is the committee that looks at issues around social justice and health. So um, portfolio responsibilities to the Minister of Health and other ministries that link into that. Now we have mental health and um, the parliamentary secretary for TGA um, and also families and community services. So anything to do with um, social justice comes under FAXIA and also we have um, human services, which is Centrelink and Medicare and those things. Okay. Then below that we have the reports. So once again, if you were to click on this, bring that noise down again. Sorry. <laughs> if you were to if you were to click on this uh, icon, you'd get the report, the whole um, full text. This is the hearing inquiry. So we've been able to put photos that related to that specific inquiry together here, and then you can bring them up, and they're all fully captioned. 
Um, there's a video here which shows Senator Claire Moore in full flight at the time when the report was tabled. And the other thing that we've been able to put here basically is ABC, no, just a little bit of a sound issue, is ABC radio um, interviews talking about Senate inquiries. And we, we put those in because they're really, they manage to summarise in a really good fashion um, the main issues within any particular committee and often with interviews with the chair or committee members and such. Okay, now if I wanted to go into a particular committee, and I don't want to go through that um, map at the front, I can go through this page, which is basically just an index page. So this lists all the committees by name, grouped by their type. And so if I were to type in COVID, it will immediately find the COVID select committee for me. So this is the Committee of Our Age, and it's been very well documented by OSPIC, thank you very much. And it, it, it shows the need for social distancing in our hearings, it shows the huge reliance on video conferencing at that time. So that's well worth a look. And then below, I'd recommend you, you have a look at this video, which basically has uh, footage of Senators Gallagher and Corman and um, the member, um, Tony Burke, MP in the House, speaking about the value of um, Senate committees and why the COVID committee should be a committee of the Senate to keep an eye on, on Parliament at a time when Parliament couldn't actually sit. I've left the best till last. So this is our um, committee timeline. So basically what we have here in the middle is a timeline. Above it, we have um, events that were important in the history of the committee system. So as you go along, you'll see establishment of the first Senate committee, referral of bills to committees. And then as you keep going, you'll find um, the establishment of the um, Standing Committee on Regulations for Ordinances, for instance. So if we were to go in there, you'll find out why this is the most successful committee on the Commonwealth Parliament, according to former Clark Odgers. Um, you can navigate backwards and forwards within that track. And this particular entry is very rich in oral history. So for instance, this long-standing chair of the committee, Senator Wood, um, basically got into all sorts of trouble. He's a government chair and got into trouble with the government because he, his committee was constantly um, wanting to disallow the government's own regulations. And he was able to really convince the committee that, that the, the important functions of the committee was such that any decision of the committee should be considered a decision of the Senate. So that's tremendously important. Going back to the start of the timeline again, the second half of the timeline has, and I, in, in my view, this is the best of the site, um, basically highlights 30 landmark outstanding reports. And it's here that we've really sort of been able to contribute some quite um, original research in describing these. So I thought, I'll, because we've been talking about the apologies, I'll take you across to 2001. Right, keep going. Okay, so here's the first of the, um, of the trifecta of Senate committees that resulted in an apology. And you'll see that we've actually put the apology itself and a transcript down the bottom. Um, I actually want, um, this, this inquiry was very important because it was set up by former Senator Andrew Murray, who it's, uh, is talking about the period in Australian history, the 20 year period when 10,000 young people from the UK and Malta were brought to Australia, suffered um, quite terrible treatment, many of them in, the, in children's homes around Australia. And Senator Murray, of course, was a child migrant himself. He was sent to Rhodesia at the age of four years old. So he, he set this inquiry up. And I actually would like to give him the last word. So I'll just flick across here to the community affairs page, which has that inquiry on it. And if the video gods are willing, I'd like to show you this video. So this, this video is actual footage from the hearing. It's the context is that they've, they've had a, a long day of people giving very harrowing er evidence towards the committee. And this is Andrew, Senator Murray expressing the impact of this evidence on him. I think the line of questioning of um, Senator Knowles is an extremely productive one because it's been a problem we've faced as a committee, uh, is not just trying to understand why it happened, but why nothing was done about it when it had happened. And I think in my own mind, 
the, one of the problems is the difficulty we all have as human beings in facing up to horror. I mean, this is a horrifying tale. And speaking for myself, I'm a person who did nine years of active war service, and yet I have shed more tears in the weeks and months of this inquiry from the horror I have read and experienced at the hearings than I did in my war service. And it's a very powerful and impactful um, <coughs> experience for those who have to hear your, your story. So I think that helps show some of the power of Senate committees. Um, there's a little card that we've been giving out. If you haven't got one, you can get one on the way out, which has the URL of the site. So yes, I encourage you all to, to have a look and see what you can find. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Paula. Um, Navigate Senate Committees was produced by the Procedure and Research Section of the Department of the Senate with the assistance of officers of the Senate Committee Office and the Parliamentary Library Statistics and Mapping Section. One of the, one of the, the, the great things about the staff of the Senate Department and staff of the other parliamentary departments is they don't just make you look good, they, uh, they, they make us look good. Um, one of the first conversations I had in uh, 2017 when I took over as uh, clerk of the Senate was around, what are we going to do for the 50th anniversary of the Senate committee system? And I went, let's, let's build a website. Let's, 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 be, let's be modern. Let's, let's build a website, a really rich and beautiful and detailed and original resource about the work of Senate committees. That was the end of my input. I, I thought that was pretty good. Um, but that was the end of my input and very much um, Paula Waring has been the driving force behind um, the, the concepts, the design and the features of Navigate Senate committees. And I'm so proud and grateful of um, the, the thought and the original research and just the persistence to deliver such a, a beautiful and rich resource. And uh, I'd really like you all to join me in thanking Paul especially for that work. <laughs> who, who knows what she'll do in the Senate committee office. Um, thanks do go to many, many other people um, besides Paula. I'd like to mention uh, some of the people who assisted with the, the design and with the, the content of the site. Paula, of course, Ruth Barney, um, Rebecca Hudson, who we've lost to DPS, but she's always welcome back. Rebecca, if you're here today. Liz Koshell, who um, did an amazing amount of work in relation to the, the design and content of the, uh, of the website in her time here. Are you here today, Liz? Where's Liz? Oh, hello, hello, Liz, welcome back. <laughs> Um, Margie Jones, Alice Clapham, Meredith Bond, Cheryl Hardiman, Kate Morris, Sophia Moffat, Michael Lynch, Alexandria Moore, Matt Keel, Wendy Mackay and Terry Bunter and Louise Jordan from Spire, the staff at Ice Lab um, who, who did the design and development and technical behind the scenes um, work, and our colleagues in the Department of Parliamentary Services, Chris Giuliano, Chris McGahn, uh, Grisula Giopoulos, Monica McKinley, and Eric Eichinger. Um, thank you all for being here today. It's tremendous to, to finally launch uh, the, the website. We were hoping to launch it earlier in the year and COVID came along. Um, one of the um, other activities that we had intended um, alongside the, uh, the, the launch was a panel discussion featuring some former senators, former Senator the Honourable Judith Troth, uh, Claire Moore and former Senator John Wacker-Williams uh, were dead keen to participate in 
a panel uh, that we had to unfortunately set aside because of COVID travel restrictions at that time of year. Um, fingers crossed we'll be able to do something with uh, that trio of former senators next year. Um, it just remains for me to thank you all for being here today and to encourage you to um, please have a look at the website. It truly is uh, a, a beautiful and rich resource, which we will continue to keep up to date as the next 50 years of the modern committee system uh, transpire. Thank you all. Cheers.